In today's world, there is a great deal of interest in what goes into our food. It seems like with each new day comes a new report claiming the disastrous effects of one ingredient or another. While trans fats and sugar definitely aren't good for you, they are far from the most frightening things that could be in your next bite. Everyone knows what it is like to look forward to a relaxing evening at home after a long week at work. This is undoubtedly what was on Stephanie Granger's mind on this particular Saturday in February of 2011. Unfortunately, that night, relaxation was not on the menu. It was a normal night in East Texas when Stephanie settled in for an evening of ice cream and a movie. Stephanie opened her small tub of great value peanut butter stars from Walmart and started to dig in. Soon she felt a sharp pain in her lip. Stephanie's first thought was that there was a piece of aluminum foil in her dessert. To her surprise, it was actually a broken piece of a razor blade. Understandably upset, she called Walmart to alert them of the situation. One would expect a potentially life-threatening mistake to be met with an appropriate amount of concern. However, according to Stephanie, all she was told was, I'm sorry, I hope your day gets better. Not exactly the kind of response that would make you trust that next sweet treat. Anyone that has ever planned a wedding knows it can quickly become a life-dominating task. With a typical to-do list consisting of sorting out a location, finding a caterer, ordering flowers, and booking entertainment, it makes sense that there might not be much time left for things like preparing a home-cooked meal. With so much of the work accomplished and being a mere two weeks away from the big day, the last thing bride-to-be Rebecca Shorten expected was to be hospitalized by her microwave dinner. Rebecca sat down with her fiancé, Craig Stevens, to a plate of Tesco brand macaroni and cheese. In her first bite, she bit into something hard, but possibly, thinking it was an undercooked piece of pasta, she swallowed anyway. Rebecca took another bite of her meal, only to encounter another hard object. This time, she decided to investigate. Rebecca was shocked to remove a two-inch metal nail from her mouth. After looking through the rest of the plate, she found yet another nail. One doesn't need to be a doctor to realize this is not the ideal way to introduce extra iron into your diet. It wasn't long before Rebecca began to feel ill. An x-ray at the Lincoln County Hospital showed she did indeed have a nail in her intestines. Doctors determined the safest course of action was to keep Rebecca in the hospital until the nail passed naturally and saved surgery as an option if the situation worsened. To their credit, Tesco did acknowledge the seriousness of what had happened and pulled all of the food in question from shelves until they completed their investigation. According to Rebecca, her fiancé will be handling dinner preparation from now on, and it will not be coming from the microwave. On the morning of June 18, 2001, Angelina Cruz was on her way to her job at a local jewelry store. Stopping at a nearby Burger King, Angelina ordered a sausage, egg, and cheese croissant. While chewing her second bite, she immediately knew something was very, very wrong. Angelina experienced a sharp, piercing pain in her cheek. She spat out the partially chewed breakfast sandwich along with a not insignificant amount of blood and the tip of what appeared to be a syringe into her napkin. Angelina brought the object in question to the attention of the store manager and then went to the local police. According to her attorney, she has expressed intense concern of contracting HIV as a result of the puncture wound and stated she was not even willing to kiss her children because of what she may or may not have contracted. While her worries may not necessarily be medically accurate, it is hard to apply the standard of rational thought when someone's health and the health of their children is potentially at risk. In the wake of this, Angelina has been under the care of a psychiatrist due to how traumatizing the incident was for her. 
she also brought an $11 million suit against Burger King. The year 1986 saw many pivotal events, from the Chernobyl meltdown to the Challenger shuttle disaster. 1986 was also the year that the FDA received one of its largest complaints ever. Valentine's Day in Schenectady, New York, a mother claimed to have found pieces of broken glass in the jar of Gerber brand baby food she was feeding her infant. Store owners in the area promptly pulled the baby food from their shelves. A quick investigation verified that no other jars were contaminated, and the glass was more than likely the work of a person who had access to the product after it had left the Gerber factory. This meant the most reasonable conclusion was that someone intentionally sabotaged baby food with shards of broken glass. Unfortunately for Gerber, it had only been a few years since the Chicago Tylenol murders, in which a never-discovered perpetrator laced bottles of the pain medicine with potassium cyanide. This resulted in seven deaths initially, and spawning multiple copycat poisoners thereafter. The public was already on high alert for potential food and drug tampering. Within two weeks, 137 complaints of glass across 30 states poured into Gerber headquarters. Of the 137 samples submitted, less than 30 contained any glass whatsoever. As there was no way to know what happened to the jars after they were purchased, and there were no life-threatening injuries as a result, this evidence was considered circumstantial at best. The FDA inspected 23,000 jars of baby food and found a total of five that had a harmless amount of glass particulate. Basically, sand which is a common residue in the mass production of glass containers. While there may have ultimately been only the one original case of an actual harmful amount of glass in the baby food, any parent knows that is all you need to be concerned. Costco is a well-known shopping destination for those looking to buy in bulk and save money. With an absurdly large selection of products from eyeglasses to hot tubs, this wholesale giant truly has something for everyone. But as Mission Viejo resident Olivia Chanes discovered, sometimes you can get more than you bargained for. Looking for a quick meal, Olivia ordered a hot dog from the Costco food court. Initially, everything seemed and tasted fine. After a couple of bites, however, she discovered something she could not chew through. Initially thinking it was a piece of her braces, Olivia was amazed when she soon discovered it was actually a live bullet. A 9mm round, to be exact. X-rays revealed that this was in fact the second bullet, as Olivia had already swallowed the first one, not noticing it. While the idea of having live ammunition inside your digestive tract is more than a little anxiety-inducing, doctors decided in this situation the safest thing to do was to allow Olivia's body to pass the bullet on its own. Despite how scary of an event this was, she was still able to find humor in the situation, stating if a bullet's going to be in your stomach, at least it didn't pierce the skin to get there. Costco's CEO was less lighthearted, stating that they don't understand how this could have happened because all of the hot dogs passed through a metal detector prior to leaving the factory. It seems to remain a mystery to this day. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. You can see another video by pressing there, and of course, press above my head to subscribe to my channel now, because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.